Okay, this is AP, AB, and BC Calculus. We are doing Unit 1, Section 16, which is the last section in the unit. We're going to talk about working with the Intermediate Value Theorem, or IVT. Okay, so the Intermediate Value Theorem is going to show up on your AP exam. 100% it's going to happen. Uh, it is not actually a calculus theorem. It's a theorem that you can learn in Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 or Pre-Calc. You honestly uh, can learn this pretty much anytime. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do specifically with calculus, but we're definitely going to apply it in calculus. So the intermediate value theorem relies on two things being true, that f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, and that k is some number between the two outputs at a and b, so f of b and f of a. Uh, then there is at least one number c somewhere in a b such that f of c equals k. So let's, let's talk about what you would have to do if you saw this on an AP, and, and we'll go from there. To show that this theorem applies, you need to demonstrate physically math with your mathematics two things. One, that f of x is continuous on the interval, and that could be as simple as saying something like f of x is a polynomial, it's always continuous, right? Um, and that k, whatever numerical value you're given, falls between the two outputs, f of a and f of b. Once you've done that, you can just roll out the by the IVT and then collect your awesome AP points, right? Um, so you have to demonstrate the, AV, the IVT applies, and then you can just be like, yo, by the IVT, this is why. All right, so let's talk about what this actually means logically. All right, so um, the IVT, right? So, so if we talk about the IVT logically, I usually do this at school. Um, we're not physically at school, but arguably this is better. So I did it with school and Wendy's. Okay, so here's school. Thank you, Google Maps, and here's Wendy's. So we're going to call F of A school, right? And we're going to call F of B Wendy's. So you're mad hungry after school and you decide to hoof it to Wendy's, right? So you're a continuous function naturally because you totally can't teleport. And if you can, that's awesome. But we're going to pretend that you're a normal, regular human for the purposes of this video. So Montgomery Avenue is between school and Wendy's. By the IVT, you have to cross Montgomery. So let's look at why this makes sense, right? You're a continuous function. You can't uh, so, so you're a continuous function, right? So first thing, you're a continuous function, you can't teleport. Second thing, Montgomery, which is the value that I called k, is physically between the Wendy's and the school, which would be the two outputs, right? So there's no way that you walk to Wendy's without crossing k. So let's go ahead and, and show that. So maybe, right, maybe you walk out of the schoolyard and you cut across the track and you walk down 15th, right? Uh, and maybe you even walk along Montgomery, but oh look, you got to cross, right? You had to cross to get to Wendy's. Maybe you walk out of the schoolyard, walk all the way down. Oh, hey, there you go, crossing Montgomery's, walk here and then walk back up, which, you know, doesn't, uh, that's a possibility, right? I understand that that actually wouldn't be a function because it's a vertical line, but just bear with me, right? Maybe you walk out of the schoolyard and you walk down 16th and you walk over Montgomery and then you cross here, and then keep walking and then walk down. It doesn't matter. Either way, you're crossing Montgomery. That's what the IVT says, right? So let's walk through uh, a couple of problems doing the IVT, but that's the logic of how it works. Okay, so show that f of x equals zero for at least one x in one to 10. Okay, so in order to apply the IVT, I have to do two things. One, I have to say that f of x is continuous, right? f of x is continuous on the window from one to 10 uh, because f of x is a polynomial. Polynomials are always continuous. That's it. I can just say that, right? I just, but I need to throw out there that I understand that that is a requirement. I can't just assume that they understand that. They're asking me to demonstrate the knowledge that I know what is required to invoke the awesome power of the IVT. And one of those two things is that I have to state that f is continuous. The second thing I need to show is that this zero is between the two outputs. So I need to find f of one. Well, f of one is going to be one minus seven plus one. So that's a negative five. Right? And I need to find f of 10, which is going to be a really big number. Uh, so that's going to be a 931, right? Okay. So sure enough, negative 5 is less than or equal to 0, which is less than or equal to 931. Or if you want to write it this way, you can write f of 1 is less than or equal to 0 is less than or equal to f of 5. I don't care, right? So second thing I had to show is that 0 is between the two points. So by the IVT, that's not what I meant. Uh, f of x equals zero uh, for some x in that window, right? And again, my job is to just show the IVT applies and then say, cool, so by the IVT, boom, that's it, right? You can use the abbreviation IVT for intermediate value theorem. It's pretty common. It's totally fine. 
All right, so go ahead and try a P1. That's the same idea. Notice I want f of x equal 10, somewhere between 2 and 3. All right, you can pause me if you want to do it by yourself. So number one, f of x is continuous on the window from 2 to 3 because it's a polynomial, right? 2, uh, f of 2 is going to be 16 minus 12 plus 2, which is a 6, right? Uh, f of 3 is going to be 81 minus 18 plus a 2, which I don't really feel like doing. 61, 63, 65. Cool. All right, so anywho, so I get 65, and then I say, oh, that's cool. F of 2 is smaller than or equal to 10, which is smaller than or equal to F of 3, because remember, F of 2 was a 6, and then a 10, and a 65. Great. Cool. Okay, so check. And then all I have to do is say, by the IVT, F of X equals 0, or not 0, 10, my bad, 10. F of X equals 10 uh, for at least one x in the window from two to three. Notice that the two and three are not included in the window, so they're included in the original question, but they're not included in the answer, and I should have fixed that over here, my bad. Okay, cool. Um, so I actually should have fixed that in the original question. It should have said from, so the, the solution to the IVT does not include the two endpoints. So I apologize, I should have said that in the originals. Okay, so, in E2, we're going to decide if the statement is true or false, and we're going to use the IVT to justify our conclusion. So in A, we're given g of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 2, and we are asked if g of x must equal negative 1 for some x in the window from 0 to 1, which this time I did put parentheses correctly. So remember, if we want to use the IVT, we need to see if the IVT applies. So g of x is continuous except when the denominator equals 0, right, which would be at x equals 2. Thankfully, 2 is not in that interval, so it is continuous on 0 to 1. Check. Second thing I need to check is that if I find g of 0 and g of 1, negative 1 falls between them. So the first requirement is met. The second requirement, I find g of 0, and I get that that's a 1 over negative 2. I find g of 1, and I get that that's a 2 over negative 1, so negative 2. Sure enough, uh, negative... 2 is less than or equal to negative 1, which is less than or equal to negative 1 half. So yes, this is true by the IVT, right? The second one, right away, I can see that it's false because I already did the work in part A, right? When I go to see if it's continuous, I know that g of x is continuous except at x equals 2. Well, x equals 2 does fall in this window, so no IVT because... It's not continuous on the window from 1 to 4, right? So, so B is false, right? I can't use the IVT on B, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do a P2. Same thing, right? Um, so when I go to look at continuity, right, I see that G of X is continuous except when X minus 5 is 0, which is going to be at X equals 5. Well, right away, I noticed that it's not continuous at 5, so no IVT. This one's false. Okay, um, but when I go to do the second part, right, I can see that here, g of x is continuous on 6 to 7, right, because x equals 5 is not, is not in this window, right? Then I go ahead and check the second thing, which is what is g of 6? Well, g of 6 would be a 3 over 1, which is a 3. g of 7 would be a 4 over a 2, which is a 2. Sure enough, 2 is less than or equal to 2.5, which is less than or equal to 3. Check. So this is true by the IVT. Okay, so again, when you see a theorem, the biggest thing that you're going to have to remember is you have to demonstrate that all the requirements of the theorem are true before you can invoke this theorem and say it's a fact. So it's sort of like if you have a list of things that you have to do on a job application, like if you need your high school diploma 
and also a year of work experience and also a driver's license. Well, that's a checklist and, and all of those things have to be true for you to apply for a job, right? Like maybe that's what this job needs is those three things. Same thing here, for, to apply a theorem, you have to think, are all of the requirements for the theorem met? If so, awesome. If not, I need to be able to specify which requirement was not met. So that's the end of unit one.